Alright, so picking up from where the story picked off. We just got done performing at the Indy, and everything went perfectly amazing. The set was good. And I had to spend a little bit of time in the Kaiser Police Department, waiting for my fire to pick me up. That's okay. We all make it home. We all got rest. And in between this, I was recording one of my first EPs called uh, It's Too Cold In Here Fuck which is one of my favorite projects even though it's one of the darkest that I ever made it's hands down just some of the best music I made in general you know what I mean because at the time emotion was there I was learning more than three notes on guitar so I went down and just made a whole EP in like one week and uh, that's that's gonna be a huge point in this story is it's too cold in here's release was probably the biggest important release at the time so I was really pushing that mixed I was really pushing that mixtape or demo or whatever you call it I was performing the songs everywhere I went I went to open mics in between like the actual shows I also counted this as a tour but I went to like open mics I went to mezzos a few times and um we just got done performing our first actual venue show. So we were trying to see what the next moves were. And our friend, I'm not going to say his name. And if I do say people's names, I never say the last ones because names should be protected in all YouTube videos, in my opinion. A uh, little disclaimer to other people that want to do stuff like that. Always take into consideration that people will not like it when you like bully name drop them. But, um, either way, my friend who had a birthday coming up wanted us to perform at, the, at this place that had cabinets. This place was just, like, right outside my city. So, I mean, like, that's fine. I'll go out, and I'll do it for a night, right? So, we get there, and it was, uh, it was interesting, actually. Uh, fairly interesting, um... I didn't want to be there. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Alright, I'm not trying to be like mean at first because I'm so cool with that person. It's all cool. It wasn't his fault. But um, I didn't want to be there because, you know, at first I was like, alright, let's go. Yeah, this is going to be sick. Like a party and the cabins and like performing. And I don't know. Uh, we didn't perform until like 1 in the morning. I mean, like, we had a whole night ahead of us of just having to deal with so much things one I cannot stand being a sober fly in a room full of drunk people I can't drink uh, well I can but I choose not to only because I have a disease based on my liver and I don't want to put it in jeopardy at any given point in case if I ever end up getting like the surgery or something right but, um, we're sitting here, this, this party is just collapsing from under everyone's feet. And everyone knew it, I think, too, because, like, we were hearing people complain, like, this party fucking sucks. I mean, like, they didn't say, like, this party fucking sucks. But there was this one person in the back that said, like, man, this party's whack. And I was like, man, what are we doing here if we're not performing? And then they gave us a green light to do it. So we ended up performing. And everyone loved it in the cabin they were having fun with it and uh we even made patches that night it was pretty cool i gave a uh, give a few patches to people and we got like three new subscribers to like uh, our youtube channel it was a night it was definitely a night and uh that was the third show and our confidence started to get hella cocky but we had the right to do so because we haven't had one bad com comment yet so after the cabin show that would eventually land me back into the indie where the infamous medicine skit incident happened. So I did a solo set at the indie around the ending leg of the tour. Now, this is around the ending era of the tour. I already told you about like the in-betweens of the open mics and mezzos and stuff. That's basically most of the areas I performed throughout the whole tour. So now we're back at the indie to wrap it up. And at this time, I'm in a heated fight with MD Physicians Care, and I am fired up. 
I am annoyed, I'm fed up, I'm angry, I can't take it anymore, right? So I, I decided to bring my medicine on stage the night of that show. And I drunk it on stage. And what it does, it doesn't make me feel good. When I drink it and chug it, my stomach gets upset. So I downed a whole medicine pouch and then said, fuck MD Physicians Care, and then continued to do an acoustic hardcore song to kind of protest against them in a way, I guess. I don't know. I just saw it red. I was mad. My life was being held in a line. I had no control over it. I fucking lost my shit. But when that medicine skit happened, there was two old people in the back of the indie, and they got up and left. That night, I did not make that theater that much money. I only made like $13 in total. The owner was not too happy that I was thrashing around on the stage, covering myself in my medication, and not getting a big audience. But honestly, that wasn't my fault. One, I did advertise the show heavily. I just don't have much in-person followers yet. I just now stepped into the scene. I'm a new. My main fan base is mostly online. So I'm okay with that. But he, get, I guess he thought I was going to bring in a packed house. I told him I just started the music scene. I didn't know what he expected. But uh, he was like, oh, $13. And I'm just like, yep, I only play for the music. And he gave me like the, the most hilarious, confused look ever. But then I, then I realized why. I was like, yeah, I, I guess I wouldn't be too uh, uh, upbeat about making only $13. I, I can understand where he's coming from. So after that show happened, I started to get more fans and I was completely happy to shut down the first tour uh, of the never ending shit show. But personally, I also want to talk about things that happened in between that wasn't show related. Um, during this tour, I did lose my grandmother. I was uh, seeing her on hospice in between uh, in between weeks of uh, the four-month uh, run that this tour had. And uh, she, uh, she passed around the ending leg of it. So it wasn't like early in the tour. It was about like halfway through. And uh, I uh, used the tour as a way to cope with it as well with other things that I told you guys about. So, like, I already had a deep, deep mental spout just busting open in my head. I didn't know how to feel. I didn't know how to react. And I definitely didn't know what to write about. I was, I was mad. I was sad. I was confused. I was at peace that no one I know is in pain uh, anymore. Because, honestly, like, if you're on, if you're on hospice, you're, you're, you're miserable, in my opinion. I feel like. That I, I, I get like living up to the old age and stuff is like the most peaceful way to go out, but hospice hospice just looks miserable. So I took I took that a lot and just balled it up and then just started like just exploding into writing and, uh, and that's how the last leg of the tour got through. And then after the tour, I just I sat down and processed all the shit I went through. And one of those mornings after the tour was the morning I won my case. I won my case to fight for my medicine. The whole tour was a giant protest to say fuck you to them, and I won. I took them down, you know? So, this tour has a lot of sentimental meaning, and it'll probably be uh, deemed one of the most craziest moments of my life. I went through so much character growth and I went through so much uh, change and havoc, but I didn't fall through, I, I stayed. I stayed up. I stayed up and I kept kicking. That's the, that's the important thing. And that's the thing I took away from this tour, that everything can be took from you at any given moment. You can have your freedom taken away from you. You can have your rights taken away from you. You can have your life taken away from you. It's not funny. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta live the perspective that like everything can be taken from you last minute, so you should tackle it like right now. That's why I went for that tour. If I was gonna be put off in this earth at any given moment, I at least wanted one tour under my belt. I didn't care if it was a bunch of bedrooms and basements. I wanted my music to be imprinted 
into the world before my time came. And I got did it, and we got a good shit started. We got an underground community being made now. It's it's amazing. But uh, if you ever have an idea, you had to fucking go for it. That's the thing to take away from this. Don't slag and slow on your ideas just because you don't have enough to work with. Make something to work with. It. And uh, that's a good bit of the info of the Never Ending Shit Show tour. I'll probably release one more video just adding like small little clips and details and like funny backstories. But uh, I felt like I would get these uh, two segments out of the way first because they're pretty serious. I dodged some serious bullets this year and I'm going to be celebrating hard in 2023. I can't wait to catch you all at the Make Punk Shitty Again tour, and I can't wait to perform at actual big venues this time, and we have a whole ass number of projects and artists coming up. Thank you.